Hello and welcome to Gary Clark Tech and this YouTube special on paginating, filtering and sorting API data. The section that you're going to work through here is taken from the much larger course PHP API Pro which teaches you everything you need to know about creating APIs in PHP. The section we're going to focus on here is from around about halfway through the course and it's where we're dealing with response content and we're going to have some programmatical challenges which are paginating, filtering and sorting. So it's going to be a lot of fun. If you do enjoy it and you want to enroll in the full course afterwards, then just check the description or the link at the end of the course. All the details you'll need are there. Now, even though we're joining the full course partway through here, what I've done is I've tried to make it as easy as possible for YouTube students to just be able to dive in and pick up where we're starting here. So what you need to do is go and clone the repo. So here I'm just going to grab the repo address, copy that to clipboard. Then I'm just going to clone that. So git clone. There's that address that I've just pasted in there. And then I'm just calling this PHP API Pro, but you can call it whatever you like. Okay, so we've cloned into there. And then here is that repo. Now the file that you're looking for in order to follow these steps is one called YouTube Setup. Dot md and this is it here and basically all this is is just like four simple instructions which will get you to the exact same point here so that you can just code along with me okay so we're just going to grab these one by one paste them into the console and that'll get us up and running so here we're going to make sure we check out the right branch so i've created a branch called youtube start which will be the exact point that uh, the code is starting from that these recording is starting from here so we'll check out that branch and then what we need to do is just run a couple of docker commands so you'll need to have um, docker desktop running on your computer but what i've done is i've created some custom images and i've got everything set up for you so that once you run these two commands you will literally have the exact same setup as me and that will be a lot less painful than trying to set up all these things yourself. So I'm using PHP, Nginx and MariahDB, which is like a fork of my SQL. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is run Docker Compose up. That will spin up those services. For you, it might take a little bit longer there because you've got to go and pull the images which I built and also the MariahDB image. Then what we want to do is install the dependencies. So make sure you run Composer install and not Composer update because Composer install will read my lock file and give you the exact same versions as a software as what you see me using in the video. Let's run that. Okay, so again, that will have been a bit quicker for me because I already have those things installed. And then, uh, optional step, but well, you'll want to connect to some kind of database client, I think, because I'm going to give you some SQL commands in the next one, which will help you sort of seed your database and set it up with the exact same tables with the exact same data as what you see me with. And so the credentials are in the Docker Compose file, but I've actually just dropped them into this readme here. You'll need these and then you'll need to enter them into um, your database connection using whatever tool you use. I'm using Table Plus. And so here is my connection here. And so I've just entered all of those details into here. You'll notice these are all the same values as what you see here. So the password goes in the password field. Uh, database name is Flights API. So as you can see, uh, database name is Flights API. Host is this. So localhost and the port is 3306 because that is the mapping which I've set up as you can see here. And then all I do is just test my connection. That's all green. It means I'm good to go. So as long as you get yourself to this point, then you'll be good to go and follow along from here. Before we start writing our own code, let's get familiar with the files which are already here and then it'll be much easier when we start to progress. And so it's a very uh, simple sort of application. It's based on the Slim framework, which is just a very minimal framework because I didn't want a lot of abstractions and a lot of complex code in here. The idea is to focus on the stuff which you need to know about APIs and creating APIs in PHP. And so if you ever get stuck uh, just have a look at the little breadcrumb in the top left hand corner and that should tell you uh, exactly where we are in the code. Um, the main files that we need to look at, 
the application files which we're going to create are in this folder here called source src so we'll be doing quite a lot in the controllers we'll also be looking at entities although the ones that we're going to use are already all created uh, repositories we're definitely going to be doing some work in there coming up with custom queries for pagination sorting and filtering uh, and also there's some parts on serialization don't think we're going to touch that in the youtube edit and also if you want to dive a little bit deeper into it we have a http folder which contains some middleware and also some stuff uh, for handling errors in the application which is stuff that I recorded earlier in the course and if you're enrolling the full course you'll get to build that stuff with me uh, okay and then apart from that important files to note are the routes file so these are all the routes for the application uh, we're going to be dealing with reservations and flights and so the reservations were added last these are at the bottom here so uh, you can just get familiar with those and the flights were done first and so they're near the top just get familiar with the endpoints and how they look that'll be important when we start to fire uh, requests at this using postman and then anything else really the only other changes which i don't think we even do in this youtube edit is in the dependency injection folder where we add items to the container but if we do do any of that don't worry so we work through it in slow time and everything that you need to know is added the uh, branch where i'm starting at is on youtube you can pull it from there and so you'll be starting in the exact same place as me working on the exact same code as me so it'll be very hard to get lost if you do get lost just check the breadcrumb in the top left hand corner if i ever add classes to a file just uh, check the imports at the top maybe looking at my branch on um, github if it's not clear what i've added but i think in most cases i show exactly which imports are being added apart from that i think we're good to go and start writing some code before we go any further, I think it's going to be beneficial if we both have our data in the exact same state. It's certainly going to make life a lot easier for you. And so what I've done here is I've just gone ahead and created an entire SQL file, which has some drop table statements in there, then create table statements, and then some inserts for actually inserting the data. So that once you run all of these commands, which you can just run all in one go, then we'll both have the exact same data in the exact same state and that's going to be really beneficial going forward for all the things that we want to do so we'll have a quick uh, look through this file i'll just explain what all the different parts are and so here what we're doing is we're looking if these particular tables exist and if they do we're going to drop them that will make sure that we're both starting from a blank uh, slate and then we're going to create the flights table we're going to create the passengers table and then the reservations table and the reason why I've done it in this order and it's very important to do it in this order is because the reservations table holds foreign keys to passenger and flight and so that's why this one has to go last and then and it's also why uh, that one was dropped first by the way okay so then we're going to add some records to the flights table we're just going to create 10 flights i've done them on different days so just thinking ahead might be pretty cool to go and search for flights for a particular day but mostly we're going to be operating with one flight and looking at reservations and passengers for one flight and doing all the cool stuff around that but we'll get to that shortly uh seed the passengers table so just 30 individual records all different passengers uh that's all fairly straightforward i think this one's quite interesting because this is the join table or this is what links a flight to a passenger it's our reservations table so like i say these are all going to create reservations for just one flight but for all 30 of these previous passengers and we've mixed up the travel class with economy first and business and different seats so we can have a look at doing some cool stuff we'll look at some pagination uh, look at doing some query filtering using the uri maybe we could just look for uh, seats which are economy on a particular flight you know use your imagination we'll try out a few different things just to show you how you can build this kind of filtering and sorting and ordering into an api and again like i say we'll also have a look at some pagination so hopefully we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know uh, regarding 
sort of looking up data in an API and we'll come up with some nice solutions to some common problems. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do really is to go and run this just to make sure that we're both on the same page. So I'm using table plus. I've already dropped this into a SQL editor here. As you can see, there are all those records. And then I'm just gonna choose this here and I have an option to run all. Okay, so I don't see any errors or any nasty red writing. So that is telling me that this has worked. Let's refresh. I have a flights table with 10 flights in there. I have a passengers table with 30 passengers in there. And I have a reservations table with 30 reservations in there. So all nice and clean. We are now both in the exact same uh, position as each other. So it's gonna be really easy for us going forward to have a look at all those things that we mentioned. What we want to work on now is pagination because if we look at our record set at the moment, what happens if I go and hit this endpoint here, flights, number, reservations, if I fire this off, what it will do is it will bring back every single reservation for that flight. So if this was like a big airline or something, you could get back like over a hundred reservations all in one go. Or if we were just looking for reservations, not for a particular flight number, but just reservations in general, then you could get back like thousands and thousands. So we need to design pagination into the system. And so not only do we want to sort of split this up so we can get back like a subset, like 10 records at a time, we also would like to add hypermedia. Remember back right towards the beginning of the course, we spoke about hypermedia and having links so that our API is discoverable, we can find other parts. So for example, if we return page one with 10 records, we want to go and find page two with the next 10 records. And so in order to be able to do that, in order to make this usable, we also want to provide the client with some links where it can follow and actually find those records. And this is the example of what we're talking about here. So uh, with the received response body, you'll get back your array of reservations uh, under a reservations key. But in addition to that, you'll also have some useful links. So you'll have links to the current page that you're on, the first page in the record set, the previous page to what you are currently on, the next page, and also the last page. So that's plenty enough information there for the client to go and actually find the next page or find the last page, first page, previous, next. And in addition to that, it would also be useful for the client to know exactly how many records are dealing with, how many items are going to be on each page. The more information that you can give the client, the more it can use the information and the more it can use the information, the more people will use your API. And so in addition to those links, which will help the client navigate to those next parts, to the other reservations, the other pages. We're also gonna add some metadata, which tells them how many total items they're dealing with, how many total pages, what the current page is, and also how many items per page. So a lot of useful information there. But how are we going to get that information? It's gonna be a combination of queries and a little bit of uh, basic maths. And so that's what we're gonna be working on in this section. It's gonna be really interesting. I love like pagination, doing stuff like this. These days, there's a lot of tools that kind of take care of these things for you, which is not as fun a uh, programming practice, I think, than to actually build your own. So we're gonna paginate the records to ourselves, but we're also gonna come up with some nice components, which will generate these links and then we'll serialize those and send them back with the response content. Let's get to work. The very first thing that we want to do here is to paginate our query. Make sure we're getting back that paginated list from the record set rather than all of the records. And so the place where we actually do that query, if we go to reservations controller, we are dealing with reservations for a particular flight. That is handled by the index method in the reservations controller. And it's actually this very first line here, reservations equals this reservation repository, find active reservations by flight number. And so that is a query that we're going to want to change. Let's go and have a look at this. I've dropped a couple of comments in there and those comments, the ideas I've put there will sort of help drive how we design this. So there's some important pieces of information that we're gonna need. We're going to need to know which page we're on and we're going to need to know how many items we want to show per page. Those are the key ingredients to making this query work. And so 
we can pass that information in from the outside. So here we can say that we also want a page number and we're going to call it a limit, but that is the number of items per page. The reason why I've stuck with the word limit is it just sounds more like language which would, you would use in a query, but think of it as the number of items per page. Let's drop these onto their own lines because it's getting a little hard to read going off the edge of the page there. Okay, so now we are passing in a flight number, a page, and you'll notice that I've given it a default value of one so that if something doesn't get passed in we'll treat it as page one and also for the limit we've gone with a default value of 10 and maybe later on we'll actually store that somewhere else rather than on this method we'll find a nice centralized place to decide what the default limit will be but now we need to think about how we're going to actually use that information in our query and the way it will work is like this. We need to tell the query what the first record is, because if we want to, the first 20 records, we know that we need to start at index zero. That will be the first record. And we know that we want 20 records. So we're going to need the, we call it the offset, but treat that as the first record that we're asking for. And then the limit, how many items are we actually asking for? So, the offset needs to be calculated. The limit, we can just use that value as is. And the way it's calculated, the way the offset or the first record is calculated is like this. It's page minus one multiplied by the limit. So let's do a little bit of maths on the fly here to figure out what our first record will be. Say, for example, the page is page one and we are looking for 10 items per page. So that'd be one minus one, page one minus one, multiplied by 10. So one minus one is zero, multiplied by 10 is zero. So the first record will be record zero, and that's how things are indexed in the query. So then we have page two, we're looking for the first record. We're on page two, two minus one is one, multiplied by 10 and that is item at index 10 in the record set and so that is where we're going to start the query from and so we're going to get 10 items starting at index number 10. Hope that makes sense. All right so let's actually give this a go. The way that we adapt the query here is we're just going to add some more clauses or I should say we're going to add some more filters so we're going to set the first result and what we set that to is this page minus one multiplied by the limit and then what we want to do is set the last result or set max results I should say the total number of um, items that we are looking for and that will simply be limit okay so here with this defaulted to page one and the limit of 10 we should now see uh, less records returned to us. So let's go back to reservations controller and we'll just dump out the uh, reservations there and then we'll go to postman and this time we shouldn't be seeing 30 records like we're seeing here. We should just be seeing 10 records. Let's send this off. So that's dumped out. Let's have a look. Well it's telling us that there's 10 items in this array actually. So let's just scroll through these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 uh, and they're indexed accordingly. So we're looking to start at record 0 and retrieve 10 records. So hopefully this is starting to make sense to you by now. Let's go back and just remove that and actually get the records back for real. Fire this off again. And so now we should just be seeing 10 records. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. Okay, so we know that this is working. And I do actually know that this is the first record in the record set because of the number here. You'll notice it starts with 0, 1, and then we go 0, 2. So there is a method to the madness of uh, creating these records the way that I did. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to recognize that my data is correct. So that's a decent start. We're now paginating our record set. However, we're sort of using hard-coded values here, aren't we? We need to get these values dynamically. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use a query parameter 
or use query parameters, plural, and so we'll do things like this. We'll pass in some query params for the page and also the number of items per page. We'll read that in our PHP and pass those values into the query. We've updated our reservations query so that it's now paginating and returning us a subset of records. But at the moment, the client is kind of getting what we give them. We want it to be parameterized so that the client can choose their page and also how many items per page. And the way we're going to enable that is to allow them to pass some query parameters for page and items per page. We then need to go and grab those values and those will be the values which we pass into our query. So let's go back to the code. Here is the actual uh, reservation repository and you see here uh, we have parameters for this find active reservations by flight number. So we're going to pass those values into there. But first of all, we need to actually grab them off of the request, don't we? And so the way that we can grab query parameters is like this. So we'll say query params equals request. And there's actually a method called get query parameters or get query params. So let's dump that out and see what this looks like. We should be seeing an array with each of the query params as an item in that array. But let's go and prove that theory. So we're dumping something there. Okay, and so we have page and items per page containing those values which we see in the URL there. So far, so good. So what we want to do now is actually take those values and pass them in to this uh, query method here on the reservation repository. So first of all, let's grab the page. And the way I'm going to do it is like this. We're saying page equals query params page. If we don't have a value for that, we're just going to default to one. But you'll notice that I've also cast this to an integer because by default, we're going to be getting a string there. And that is not what this method is expecting. This method is expecting an integer. So that's why I've cast that. And then we're going to do the same thing for items per page. So we'll say items per page equals. And here, we're going to do the same thing except going to set a different default. We'll set items per page to 10. And obviously, we need to change the name of the key. So items per page should match what is in that query parameter there. So let's actually, before we go any further, just dump out page, dump out items per page, make sure that these values are good. And if they are, we can just pass them straight into this method here. Let's fire this off. I'm seeing a one and a four, page equals one, items per page equals four. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is just, we'll drop this onto another line because it's going to go off the page. So I think the first one we said was page, that is correct, page. And then the next one that we said was items per page. Let's just have a little chat about the language that I've used there. Language is quite important. It just helps other developers understand what you're doing and just helps us keep things consistent, really. So in the context of our reservations controller, we are receiving this request. And this is what the request knows that value to be. It's called items per page. That is what is used in the query parameter. And so that is why I've called it items per page here. But if we go and look at the find active reservations by flight number, I've actually used the word limit instead. The reason why I've used the word limit here is because that is language which the query builder understands, or that is the kind of language which you would use for SQL queries. And so it doesn't matter what I called it because this is just holding a value, but it just makes more sense in the context when you're looking at this query uh, to use a word like limit, and it makes more sense in the context of this reservations controller where we're grabbing a query parameter called items per page to store that in a variable named per page. And, you know, never underestimate just the power of naming things correctly and how easy it is for other people to follow your code just by sticking with names which are consistent. Okay, so this wouldn't be complete without actually demoing it. I'm expecting to see only four reservations now because we've said items per page is four. 
and those reservations will come from the first page. It'll be the first four records out of all of the reservations. Let's fire this off. I'm seeing four reservations. Perfect. And I know, remember that we said that that one there with 01 is the first record in the database. So this is working perfectly. We're taking the query parameters in the URL. We're parsing the query params, getting the values we want and passing them in to our reservation repository in order to find just that subset which the client has asked for. So this is a perfect solution for the client. They get exactly what they need and what they want to work with. Now that we've got our query together and we're able to paginate the records that we're sending back, thus sending back only the records that the client wants, now let's start to think about that little improvement where we're going to include some hypermedia so that the client is able to see which actual page they're on, request the next page, request the first page, last page, etc., and to know how many items in total. So the thing we'll take care of first is the links. Let's have a look at how these links are made up. So there's different parts. The first part here is the path. So we're going to need the path. I know where we can get that from, but we'll talk about that shortly. And we're going to need the page. Well, we've got that information because the client is supplying us with that information. They're telling us which page they want. And also we're missing items from page here. So I might include that in our links when we get to it in a moment. But those pieces of information there are the path and the page. So let's go and see if we can figure out how we can do that. So I've made a little bit of a start here. I've created a variable called links. It's just an array which will get serialized and sent back with the response content. And I have a item for self, first, last, previous, and next. And so we can use the information which is available to us, i.e. The page information and also we're going to need the number of total pages as well and we're going to use that information in order to be able to generate uh, these links so the path is something which we can actually retrieve off the request and so here what I will do is I will just say path equals and this will be request and then it's get URI and then off of that URI we can retrieve the path. And so the way that this works is the request is an object. Okay, this is all PSR7 stuff. The URI is also an object. And so when we say get URI, that gets us a URI object. And that object has a method on it called get path, which gives us the actual path. So what we were looking with there, the bit which starts from flights. So that should give us that bit there flights up to reservations and then what we want to do is we want to start sort of retrieving that pagination detail so we know we have page because we're already grabbing it off the query parameter here and we know we have items per page so that first one is really easy we're able to just get the path using the uri off of the request then the next one is pretty much the same we're looking for the first page the first page will always be one so we can actually hard code that but then uh, things start to get a little bit more complex when we look at last previous and the next because we need to sort of calculate these based on information that we have so the way to calculate the last page is we need to know the number of total pages and that will take up the page query to pram items per page is straightforward and path is straightforward so we need to know how many is the total pages and that will be the total number of records dividing divided by the number of items per page but we don't actually have the total number of items right now what we're doing is just retrieving a query of all the reservations but we haven't actually counted them now we can't count these reservations here because this is just a paginated list. This isn't the number of total reservations. In order to calculate the number of total pages, we need to know the total number of records. Okay, and then previous, this will only apply if the page is greater than one, because if we're on page one, there isn't going to be a previous. Okay, but if the, if the page is greater than one, then the previous page will just be the page minus one. So if we're on page 
4, then previous will be 4 minus 1, and the page will be 3. So I think the maths is uh, quite straightforward. It's just that little bit at the beginning where you need to actually make that check to see if it's a previous page by making sure that the page is greater than 1. And then next, we do a similar thing there, actually. So there'll only be a next page if the page is less than the total number of pages. So if the total number of pages is 5, and we're on page five, then there isn't going to be a next. So that is the check that we make there. And then what we do is the next page, this time instead of saying page minus one to figure out the previous page, the next page is obviously going to be page plus one. Uh, and so the items per page, there's no calculating there. It's simply, we just take that value and append it to the items per page parameter there. Okay. But in order for this to work, we need a total number of pages, don't we? So we're going to do a count query for that. But for the time being, just to get this working and just to send back some links, uh, let's just make up a value. So remembering how we said we're going to calculate this, it will be the total number of records divided by the number of items per page. So I'll say total records equals, let's just go with numbers which are dead easy to use. Uh, total records is 100, and then we shall say total pages equals, it's going to be total records divided by items per page. Now, we can't have a fraction of a page. So if, for example, this was 33 and we were dividing it by 10, then we wouldn't get a round number back. So we want to have a full uh, number of pages. So what we're going to do is round up, and the way we can do that is by using the seal method, which is this. And so that's why I wrapped it in parentheses, really just working ahead. And then we want to make sure that it's an integer. So I'm also going to cast this. Okay, so we now have total pages. If we said we've got 100 records and it's 10 per page, then we should see uh, this as a total number of pages here. So let's go back to where we actually serialize this and send back the data. So we're going to have a reservations key, but we're now also going to have a links key like so. So that will be converted to a JSON object when this is serialized. Let's actually go and test this out and see what it looks like. So I'm going to fire this off. Okay, because I use the number four, it's making the maths a little bit harder. Uh, let's actually just change that to 10 and try again. Okay, so here we go. Self, it will be page one. Number of items per page is 10. First will be page one. Items per page is 10. It will always be uh, 10 items per page. Last, so the interesting bit here is that the last page will be page 10 because we have 100 records. And the next page will be page two. You'll notice we don't have a previous page because that is how we coded it. We said that if uh, we don't have that previous page, if we're on page one, then just send back null. So let's go and test all of these. We'll change this now to page two and see how this changes. So it's saying self is now page two. First is page one. Last is page 10. Previous is page one because we're on page two. And next is page three because we're on page two. Two. Okay, I'm going to do one more. I'm not going to bore you too much with this, but uh, just for thoroughness, really. So I set that to page three. Self is page three. First is page one. Last page 10. Previous page two. Next page four. So our pagination links are all working nicely. The only uh, thing that is missing here is we actually need to perform a query to get the total number of records in order for this to be a true value. This next step should be fairly self-explanatory because at the moment we're hard coding the total number of records, but we need to know what the real total number of records is. So we're going to need some kind of custom query. If we look at our find active reservations by flight number query, now that one has changed. So that isn't bringing back all the records now. So it needs to be different than that because that has added pagination. So what we would need to be doing is something similar to this minus the pagination. And instead of actually getting the uh, result set, 
We just want to know how many items would be in that result set. So it's going to look fairly similar to this, but with its focus on counting the total number of records rather than returning a paginated set of records. So let's get to work. First of all, let's figure out what the API for this should be. So here, total records, we're going to change this now to this reservation repository, and we're going to have a method called this count active reservations by flight number. So again, nice descriptive name tells you exactly what that does. Let's go over to the reservation repository and just underneath our original uh, now paginated find reservations by flight number, we will just drop this in here. So public function count active reservations by flight number. That flight number will be a string. And then the query, I'm just going to drop this in behind the scenes. So that's the query. You need to make sure that this is returning an integer. Let's just talk through this. Now you'll see that there are a lot of similarities with the original query, but also some differences. So first we create the query builder, and then we are counting the IDs for our reservations. We're joining on flights again, and we're saying, where reservation cancelled at is null because we only want the active reservations and we're saying where the number is the flight number. Okay, so now you should understand why we need to make that join because we only have the flight number as the reference for the lookup here. Again, we set that uh, sort of binding there to make sure that we are able to access that. And then here we say get query. So this will get us the query. And then when we execute it with this line here, we're saying we want a single scalar result, i.e. we want that integer value. And then we're going to return that value cast as an integer. All right, so next stage, I think, is just to try this out. Whenever you write any new queries, always test them out because uh, quite often they go wrong. So no point going any further until you've made sure that that is totally right. So let's just dump out our total records here. Over to Postman, fire this off. Something's dumping. All right, so I'm getting a total of 31. Uh, yours might be slightly different. You might have 30, but uh, it's because I have a, like a little practice before I record these things. So sometimes I'm adding and deleting records, but we should have a rough ballpark number. All we need to know is that this has changed because we had 100 when we hard coded it. And now we're getting what looks like a real count coming back. So I'm going to remove that completely because I think this should be working and I should be able to just fire this off we're getting back uh, some records one two three four five six seven eight nine looks like ten to me but we have our pagination links which hopefully have been generated completely dynamically and are fully functional how many pages should we have let's think about this we just saw that we had 31 records we can't have like a fraction of a page so in order to hold 31 records if it's 10 items per page we're going to need four pages and indeed we do get a total of four pages if we look at last it says the last page is number four so here i've asked for page three it says self is page three first is page one last is four previous is two obviously if you're on page three and next is four so that's all working nicely, I think. And what that means is we're happy with our links. There's that other piece of metadata to add now, and that is the actual key called meta, which will hold things like the total number of records, total number of pages, all useful information to the client. So let's get to work on that one in the next one. We now have our links, it's fully dynamic. And so I think what we're gonna focus on next is this bit here, so the meta data, which will be total items, total pages, current page, and items per page. And this should be a lot easier because all this stuff is already either given to us by the client or it's all stuff which we've already worked out in order to create those links. So I'm just gonna copy that and drop it in my reservations controller uh, just as a reference really and so we'll drop that in there total items total pages so we need to create an array we'll call this meta not meet meta equals and then we want total items so we'll just drop that in there 
And then where can we get that from thing? We've already calculated it or it was actually what we got back from that query, which we did in the last one. So that is total records. So total records. And you know what? I think we just should stick to the same naming as what we're going to use. So where we call this total records, shall we change this? I think so, yeah. Okay, so we've changed all of those. So we're using the same names everywhere total items just staying consistent these little touches they just make things so much easier okay so now we need total pages and we also have that as well because we had to calculate that for our pagination so here we have total pages this is going so well uh, current page okay so current page well this will just be page the page which the client asked for which we already have and also items per page works exactly the same way it's information which the client has passed to us so for that we can just use items per page we're not done yet because we need to add it to the serialization so here uh, where we're adding reservations and links we're going to add one more item to that response content now that will be meta and meta all right I think this should work. Let's go and test that theory. So over to uh, Postman, fire this off again. And down at the bottom, we now have total items. We know that's correct. Total pages, we know that's correct. Current page is three and items per page is 10. So how good of an experience is that for the client now? They have all the hypermedia they need in order to find the next set of records, the last set of records. They know how many total items are gonna be dealing with, how many total pages they're gonna be dealing with. The more useful information you can give to the client, the more likely that people will use your API. And uh, you see so many APIs which don't include hypermedia, but it hasn't been that much of a huge effort just to put in these nice little touches which will make it so much easier to use and so much more usable. Okay, so we have fully functional pagination for our reservations, but I have a couple of problems with our solution at the moment. And first off, it's a bit of a mess. It looks quite procedural and we've put it all in this uh, reservations controller. And the other thing is, well, we're going to need links and pagination for our other resources, aren't we? Things like flights, things like passengers. Do we want to duplicate all of this inside the flights controller and passengers controller? Of course we don't. So we need to come up with something which is reusable. So let's start thinking about that here. And what I'd like to do is just encapsulate a lot of this stuff and then just be able to grab the details such as links, total pages or whatever information we need of a pagination metadata object. Uh, how we create that object will come to later on, but let's just get the concept of having a pagination metadata object into our code. And then after that, that'll be something that we can just go and grab those details from. Okay, now I've had a scan through all of this and the things that I think we need uh, or the things, the items which I think we'll need to be able to retrieve off our pagination metadata object will simply be, the page, the items per page, the links, and also the meta. All of the other information can be kept hidden away in whatever mechanism we use to generate those items. All right, so let's give this a go. Inside of source, I'm gonna create a folder called pagination. Honestly, can't think of a better place to put it, so uh, make me a suggestion if you can think of a better place. Uh, so pagination, and then we're just going to create a class. This will be a read-only, just a data class, which just holds that information. So we'll call it pagination metadata. Okay, so I've said this is going to be read-only. And so for that reason, there's no reason why we can't just make the properties public on this. So let's go and start to add those. All right, so I said that we're going to want page, items per page, links, and also meta and you know what i think might also be useful here we could use this as sort of the vehicle to hold our default items per page which can be just a public constant which we can read off of this so i'm also going to add public const items per page and so whenever we want to use a default items per page then we'll use it from here 
Okay, so now we want to figure out how we're actually going to create one of those pagination metadata uh, objects. And so the plan I have for this is a factory. Let me show you what I think my code should look like once we have that in place. We have our pagination metadata class now. And so what we need to do is figure out a way of how we can actually instantiate that and use it in our uh, reservations controller and so I'm just going to remove or move some things around here because what I'm going to do is hopefully I'm going to be able to cut all of this from here and drop it into our factory class when we create it and so a couple of changes I'm going to make here actually uh, which is something which I noticed after the last recording we need to wrap parentheses around that Otherwise, we'll get an error because it'll be trying, if we don't pass a page query parameter, it will try and cast that to an integer and we won't get the result that we want. So we need to do that to items per page as well also. But while we're here on items per page, if you remember what we said when we created this pagination metadata, we're going to use this to set the default. So we might as well start out as we mean to go on there and we'll set the default items per page. Okay, and so what I want to do now is create that pagination metadata factory, which is going to uh, take all of this. All this can be abstracted away inside of that factory, and it will just return us a pagination metadata object. So let's go ahead and create that class. This will start to make more and more sense uh, the further we get with it, I think. So pagination metadata factory. Okay, and so on here, I'm just going to have one static method and that will be called create and that will just return us an instance of pagination metadata will need the request and the total items because I believe with that information the request will be able to get the query params and also the path and with total items we'll be able to do calculations such as total pages so just those two pieces of information should be enough for us to derive all of the other values uh, this is going to be a request which is actually an instance of server request interface so let's create an alias to that because that will be more readable uh, just to name it request when we create the parameter here so request and then we said integer total items now I'm going to make a point of getting the name exactly the same here because when we go and abstract this away into or extract this away into this factory class then all of the variable names should already match up with everything that we've created okay so now that we've done that I think what I should be able to do is cut all of this from here and then here we're just going to say pagination metadata equals pagination metadata factory create we are going to pass in the request and we are going to pass in total items and then once we have that pagination metadata we should be able to grab the page items per page links and meta off of that so let's start doing that now page pagination metadata and this will be items per page and then here same thing pagination metadata links and pagination metadata meta okay so that takes care of the reservations controller i'm sure you'll agree this is looking much better now we have uh, something which we should be able to reuse here in our other controller. So if you want pagination for our flights or for our customer, was it customer? I think that's what we called it, passenger. If you want pagination for passengers and flights, then we have this factory class which will generate it for us. We've not hard-coded it uh, all in one place in the index method of the reservations controller. We've headed towards something which is reusable. And so what I'm going to do now is drop all of that stuff which I cut in from there. And you'll notice that the names are matching up. I don't have to change anything inside here because I stuck with consistent variable names. But what we do need to do is now take all of that information and return a new pagination metadata class. So pagination metadata. And again, I've named all of the 
uh, variables or all of the parameters for the constructor the same as the variables which we've already been using here. So things like page, exactly the same, items per page. And because I've done that, PHP Storm can actually uh, help with the auto completion by putting it as the actual first suggestion. Links and then meta. Okay, so let's actually go back to reservations controller, just dump this out and have a look what it looks like. So we're dumping out the pagination metadata. Let's go over to Postman, fire this off. And so there you'll see we have a pagination metadata object. Page is two, matching what we have in the URL. Items per page also matches. The links are looking good to me. Total items is correct, total pages is correct, current page is correct, and items per page is correct. So we can go and remove that dump and then just let this uh, go through here and we should have the exact same result. So we should have 10 items per page, 10 flights, and then we have our pagination metadata to tell me that I'm on page two. First is page one, last is page four, previous is page one, Next is page three. So this is working perfectly. We now have a nice reusable solution, which we can go and use elsewhere. But let's not just take my word for it. And the next one, what we'll do is we'll go and uh, make this work for the flights controller also. Let's now have a look at paginating flights. So I've done a little bit of work ahead because it's stuff that we've already done once for reservations. I've created a flight repository done the same thing as what we did with the reservation repository where we've created that custom query uh, and all that's different really is that we're now um, asking to set the first result and set max results basically to do the pagination for us i've passed some defaults uh, into this find flights method and that find flights method is now what we are using to retrieve flights in the flights controller. Notice I've not passed any information to that yet because we're going to get that information, the page and items per page off of the pagination metadata factory, uh, hopefully. So if we went and fired this off now, what you would see is just a normal uh, record set with 10 records in as per normal. What we want to do is be able to paginate that dynamically, i.e. not using these hard-coded defaults that we've done here, actually truly dynamically, and we want to generate the pagination metadata. So the important piece of information in order to make the pagination metadata work, which we are currently missing, is we need the number of total items. Now, what I'm gonna do here is put in something just quick, which will work for our current solution, because our flights, they're not being filtered or anything like that. We're just asking for all flights except paginated. However, in the future, we're going to want to ask for the flights by origin or by destination or by departure date, in which case we'd want to count the number of total items after that filtering has taken place. But we've not done the filtering yet, so for now we're just going to go quick and dirty. We're just going to get a count of the total items without any filtering being applied, because we know that this will work at the moment, but it's something which we'll have to change in the future. But this is just to show you really, this is just a demonstration that our pagination metadata factory will work for all different resources. So I'm going to say uh, total items equals this, We'll say entity manager, get repository, flight, class, and then we can call count on that. And if I pass an empty array, it will just count all of the flights. Okay, easy peasy. We now have a total items value, which will serve the purpose uh, of being able to demonstrate this. Next, we now have enough information to uh, get the pagination data off the pagination metadata factory because all that needs, all that create method needs is the request and also total items. So we shall say pagination equals pagination metadata factory create, pass the request, pass the total items. We could dump this out, but I'm confident in it. So we're just going to keep motoring on here. Next, we want to pass the page and total items per page to the find flights method on the flight repository. And then that means that these defaults won't get used. We'll be using the dynamic values which come from the query parameters. So pagination metadata page, pagination metadata 
items per page. Final step is to actually uh, serialize this, isn't it? So we want links and we want meta. So links also comes from pagination metadata links. And uh, looks like PHP Storm is guessing this as well. So it must be reading this and then uh, guessing which value I want off there because it's also done the same for meta. This gets smarter all the time, doesn't it? It'll be able to write all my code for me one day, I hope. Right then, so I think we have all the information we need there. Let's go and fire this off. You'll notice here, and this will just make it easy to tell if this is working. I've asked for page one, but I've also asked items, uh, three items per page instead of 10. It'll be easy to see if we have three items. One, two, three. Perfect, and then we have our links. So it's telling us that there is no previous because we are on page one, that makes sense. Items per page is three. Uh, first page is page one. Last page is page four because you have 10 records, three items per page. We're gonna need four pages. And the last page is, uh, or should say the next page is page two. Okay, and then meta is correct. 10 total items, four total pages, one current page, three items per page. And so I said that I made some changes in order to get this to work. So we've created a flight repository. I've had to inject that through the constructor of the flights controller. We have the flight repository, which needs to be created. Obviously all this will be attached to the lesson. Uh, and then one change to flight, which I always kind of forget to make. And here when we're saying, uh, th this is an ORM entity, we need to specify the repository class for this to work. And then the one final bit is just a bit of container config in the same way as when we added the reservation repository as a shared dependency. I've done exactly the same thing here. So add shared, flight repository, and then I've just used a callback in order to build this up. So we're getting the entity manager and then saying return the flight uh, entity manager get repository for this flight and return that. All right, I appreciate that was a lot of information. So, and also some of the code I did before the lesson started. So what I'd say is just go through the files slowly, make sure you understand everything. Um, basically we're injected the flight repository and that is where we've retrieved the flights from this time, but it's been a paginated query so find flights is a paginated query and we've also needed to generate the pagination metadata and we've used the pagination metadata factory the create method on that to uh, grab that and that is what contains all of the important information to make our pagination work completely so i think there i think we're good for pagination now you should have a good understanding of how this works once you've had to go through this in your own time so we're now going to work on the wacky world of filtering and this is where things can get quite kind of uh, crazy sometimes if you don't do everything in the right order but it's going to be a lot of fun still so i'll see you in the next one we're now going to have a look at filtering and sending in some query parameters so that when the client requests data, so data about the flights, can ask for the data to be a little bit more specific. So, for example, uh, say we want flights from a particular origin or to a particular destination or on a particular departure date. The client can pass that information, say, I want flights for this origin, for this departure date. And then what we've got to do is work out on the server, how do we actually form all of that data and send it back according to those preferences. And if you look at the query parameters that I've added for this uh, flights request here, now we're saying we want to get flights for the origin ABC, so airport with airport code ABC, destination DEF, and this departure date. And we should be able to change these and get back different record sets according to these preferences. Uh, something I'll show you with Postman. So up to now, we've just been typing these into the URL. But on the left hand side of these tabs, just underneath the URL bar, you can actually just enter these in by hand. And that's what I'm gonna be doing here because I'm going to uh, be experimenting and switching them on and off. And so it'll be much easier if I can just tick 
on a little checkbox here and switch these on and off to try out different uh, record sets. So a little tip there, that's better to do it this way for what we're going to be working on for filtering than to be typing it into the URL, which could get a little bit cumbersome, a little bit uh, tedious. Okay, so let's now think about the code that we need to write. If we go to our flights controller, here is where we are requesting the flights. At the moment, we're just asking for pagination. We're um, sort of filtering it by pages, but now we want to filter it by a bit of extra detail and that extra detail being those three things that we looked at I think we'll go with origin destination and departure date and so what I'd like to do is actually change uh, this method here to now accept an array of filters so as well as the page and the limit we'll pass an array of filters and we'll also use them to query the records which we get back from the database now initially Let's just hard code some values for that. So here's what I've come up with. Uh, it's just an array of filters. Um, these will be default, so we don't need to go and write any code anywhere else just yet. And so when we go and filter this, it's going to be looking for flights where the origin is ABC, destination is DEF, and the departure date is this. And so I'm just using these because I know I have at least one record in the database uh, which would match these filters. And so that will give us something to start developing off. So what we need to do now is start thinking about how we're going to change this query and how we're going to break it down because uh, this isn't going to work for us anymore. We need to apply the filtering. So what that means is we're going to need to start throwing some where clauses in there as well as this. Now, ordering is important. The order in which we do our pagination and our filtering is very important. And when you see people get this wrong, you get all kinds of wacky results. So what needs to happen first is we need to apply the filters first and then we need to apply the pagination once the records have been filtered. And so what we're going to do here actually is we're going to create a method. Um, we'll just call it apply filters or something like that. And that will actually um, use a query builder and throw in a load of where clauses. Use this information from this filters array to perform the filtering first and then what uh, we have after that will then be subject to the pagination. Okay, so before we go ahead and create that method for applying the filters, let me show you what I expect this to look like. And so we'll then have something like this. And I find this a much better way to work rather than uh, going getting lost in the weeds and figuring out how you're going to apply the filters. Just think of the API, what needs to happen in what order and write that first before you start getting into the details. And so first thing we need to do is create the query builder and then we need to apply the filters. And so the query builder is an object and objects are passed by reference. So any changes, any mutation we make on that query builder, such as applying the filters uh, will be applied so that next time we come to use that query builder it will be with those filters already applied and that will be the point where we do the pagination here uh, the pagination is nothing we haven't seen before that's exactly the same it was when we uh, just looked at our query a minute ago in its initial state and then what we're going to do is just say return query builder get query get result okay so our next step is to go and create this apply filters method. So let's just add it as a private uh, method on here. Private function apply filters is going to need the query builder. So that comes from doctrine ORM. And again, we'll just call it QB here. And then we're also going to need an array of filters. And this won't actually return anything because like I say, we're making changes to that query builder we're building up the query and because it's an object that will be passed uh, by reference and I'll just drop in the steps that we're going to do here so we're going to filter by origin if provided and so that's quite a big if so we'll need to check that as well filter by destination if provided and filter by departure date if provided so the first two are fairly straightforward we're just looking at like for like but for departure date well in the database 
our dates are actually stored as uh, date times they have that time element on there so we'll need to do something a little bit more custom for that but i'll show you what it looks like uh, to filter by origin and it's simply this hopefully this code will make sense to you now if the origin filter is set we simply add a where clause to the query builder we're saying where the flight origin is the same as the filter origin value and so that is what we are passing here so that matches that and f origin is what is held in the database so do those two values uh, match and the query will only bring us back results where they do match this is destination as you can see that is exactly the same as origin we're saying do we have a destination filter if we do we only want the records where the destination held in the database on the records in the database matches what is passed as a destination filter so now we are left with departure date so this is a little bit different the way we've done it or the way i've done it here there are probably other ways uh, to do this but i'm looking for this to match the departure date which will just be a date for example 2025 hyphen 01 hyphen 01 uh, but in the database they're not stored like that they're stored as sort of date time so i'm using a substring function here this will work in my sequel which is what we're actually using uh, for this course and so using a substring taking the first uh, 10 characters and seeing if that matches our departure date so if you do know a better way of doing this or if there is a uh, more sort of best practice for doing this kind of thing then uh, of course let me know in the comments under the lesson and we can always update it it can be a team effort can't it but we'll stick with this for now because i know this works and uh, this is just for educational purposes isn't it so there we've got three nice filters we've got uh, we're filtering on departure date uh, if that is passed by the client so notice we're saying if is set filter so if the client doesn't send that then we'll not filter on that so if we turn these off if we're only sending origin then we won't actually our code will not uh, hit these points we won't be checking these two things here only the origin filter will be set and only that where clause will apply only that filtering will apply all right so let's now go and just check that this is being dropped into there so i think we're good on that let's go back to our flights controller do we need to do anything well right now at the moment we we don't we're just testing that this works but it won't be dynamic it won't be using the information coming from the actual uh, client at the moment because we're not passing anything in we're going to do that shortly we'll just be filtering on these things here so let's actually go back and the first thing we'll do is we'll dump out the flights i think i might have one record in the database which matches this possibly two let's find out the easy way and that is to use our good old trusty die and dump so go back to postman uh we'll just turn these off so it's not confusing fire that let's see what results we get okay and so i have one record in the database which uh, matches those filters i think if i remove the date filter i should get some more because i've got uh, a few more flights between abc and def so let's give this a go i'm pretty sure we'll get some more flights maybe three correct all right so there we're getting um three extra flights back and the query for this by the way so I created a query to insert just a few more records in the database which you might not have and it's these uh, bottom three here and so what I did is in the SQL folder at the top level I've created a file uh, which will I'll put in the version control which is flights hyphen query hyphen params uh, to match the name of the lesson or similar and in there it's just got uh, some queries to insert some more flights so that we can practice our filtering together all right so i think we're good for this lesson what we need to start thinking about in the next one is actually 
using some information which the client has passed us and make this filtering more dynamic. At the end of the last one, we were just putting our filters in place, but we were still using these hard-coded filters here in our flight repository. But really, we want this to be dynamic, don't we? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, any hard-coded values. We'll still have a default empty array, uh, but then what we're going to do in flights controller here, so we we're dumping out flights at the end one, we want to pass some filtering into here. Where are we going to get the filters from? Well, actually, if we go over to Postman, the filters will come from the params. So we've already got some query parameters there. That is what we can actually use for this. So if we say filters equals, and this will be request uh, get query params, and just dump out those filters, you should see our query parameters now. Let's just give this a go. We have uh, origin, destination, and departure date, just like we are requesting here. And so what we can do now is pass that in to this find flights um, method here, which is doing the querying for us. So we'll pass filters in there. And then because we are doing that, what that means is that those filters will be applied here and then when we get this back, we'll be getting a filtered uh, record setback. So let's go and check that that is indeed what we are getting. So I'm going to dump flights out again here. I just dump out each step of the way. Uh, I know it sometimes looks tedious, but I just like to have full control and know exactly what my code is doing every time I write a new line. All right, so we're still getting back the one record. How about if we change this and we said... We don't want to add departure date. We just want anything going from ABC to DEF. Fire this off and now we get three records. So we know that now our filtering is being applied dynamically. So this is looking pretty good. Let's just remove this dump out and let these go through and I'll show you our next problem. It's something which we have spoke about before. So we're getting all of our flights and we're getting our pagination detail and do you spot any problems with the pagination there so the problem is this total items is 13 so that because that number is incorrect it's going to be paginated the whole pagination will be incorrect because that number is used to calculate total number of pages and everything really uh, so in order to generate the links correctly so we need to go back and address something which I spoke about previously and that is this here because this total items query this count it's counting all flights it's not counting the filtered flights we just want to count how many records are in this filtered record set or in fact so basically we want to know once we got to this point before any pagination or anything else how many records would we have when we've applied the filters and so that's something that we'll have a look at in the next one Let's think about how we're going to solve this problem. So we need a true total items count. So what we're going to have to do is have two queries. One uh, where we're doing total items count using those filters. And then we're still going to have this flights query. And we can't call a count that or we can't count those records because they're coming back in pages. So that is not total items. That's the number of items in uh, just one page there. So we need to replace this with a query which includes the filters. So let's have a think about what we can call this. So we'll say this and we'll get it off flight repository and let's just call it count filtered flights. I think that sounds okay. And of course it's going to need to know what those filters are. So that means we'll have to jiggle some stuff around here. We're grabbing the filters here. That's going to have to be the first thing that we grab. Do the pagination. Okay, so I think we're good. We've got the little yellow squiggly line underneath here because that uh, method doesn't actually exist yet. So what we need to do is go to the flight repository and create that. So just underneath the other query, the query for uh, find flights, we'll drop it in here. Count filtered flights. We're going to pass in our filters. And this will be an array. 
which will default to empty and we need to get back a number from here don't we an integer so how will this work well this time our query will look like this we are simply counting the number of ids but it will be the number of ids when we've applied those filters so we're going to apply the filters like before so that will simply call the apply filters method which we have used in the other query in the find flights query and then what we want back here is a single scalar result instead of a record set and so that looks like this we'll say query builder get query but this time we're saying get single scalar result casting that to an integer and returning it okay so let's go and try this out so let's dump out total items here which is the result of our count filtered flights uh, query let's fire this off and we are getting a result of three so we asked for origin is abc and destination is def how about if we say that we want departure date of uh, first the first 2025 this should now change to a result of one okay perfect so we're getting the count now and by getting the count, that means that our pagination should work. That's getting the correct uh, number of total items. So it'll be able to generate the links correctly and generate the uh, pagination data correctly. But don't just take my word for it. Let's see what happens if we fire this off now. So it's saying that we have one item, one page, and the current page is one. Items per page is 10. That's actually the default that we are using. Let's remove this departure date. This should now change to three uh, total items of three. So let's send this off. Total items of three, total pages is one because it's 10 items per page and we only have three items. Uh, current page is one. And the links all look good too. So we're on page one, and which means we won't have a previous page. And also we don't have enough records to have a next page so both those nulls are correct self is page one last is page one and uh, first is page one all right that's all looking good filtering is now in the bag so let's move on to sorting and the format that we're going to follow for this uh, comes from uh, json api so the specification there and what they say about sorting is that you should do it like this and so here you can see we have this query parameter sort equals age if you want more than one you comma separate them so here they're sorting by age and name i'll just bump up the font on this a little bit uh, but if and that's to do sorting in ascending order. If you want to sort in descending order, then you just prefix the key that you want to sort on with a little hyphen, a sort of minus symbol. And so that's what we're going to do in ours. Let's go over to Postman. I've already, already made a little start on this. So on our flights here, you can see I'm sorting on departure time and destination. Uh, if you see the little sort key here in the params section that I showed you uh, in the last section. If I wanted to sort on departure time ascending, then this is all I'd need to do. However, if I wanted to sort on departure time descending, then I just prefix that with a little minus sign there. And then uh, I will sort those in descending order in my API. Now, obviously, that isn't going to happen automatically. So we're going to need to write some code which is able to read this query parameter and split out any which have like a minus and make them go in descending order and all the others in ascending order. So uh, programmatically, this one's going to be a nice little challenge, I think. It's going to start fairly similar to the way we did with... Um, filters we need query params we need to come up with a methodology for actually performing that sort and so I think the first thing we'll do is we'll start like we did with the filters we'll go over and just hard code some values in our flights repository uh, get it sorting like that make sure it's working and then we'll actually start using the query params dynamically for real let's make a start so I'm in the flight repository and we're in our fight, find flights method. We know we're already passing filters there and I have two filters set in Postman. I uh, can't remember what they are, destination and departure time, I think. Let's check this. Departure time, destination. So let's just dump things out and make sure we're getting the right filters here and then we'll take it from there. So I'm just going to go and fire this off. 
and we'll see what's being dumped. And so we're getting sort and you notice we have just one key because it all lives under one key. So we're going to need to do some splitting here on that comma. Okay, back to our flight repository. The order we want to do this in is, first of all, we want to perform the filtering. And then once we've done the filtering, we want to do the sort. But first of all, we need to check that we actually have uh, that sort filter, don't we? So what we're going to do here is say sort equals filters. Do we have one called sort? If so, we'll use that. Otherwise, we're just going to say that sort is null. And then if we have a method similar to the apply filters one, we can just do a check there. Is sort null? If so, don't go any further kind of thing. All right, so let's think about this. We have an apply filters. Let's have a this apply sort. And I think this is going to be more complex. We'll probably need more details here. But let's think about what those details are actually going to be. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and create the method. So we'll put this underneath apply filters. In fact, we'll put it just above, save scrolling around during this lesson private function apply sort and then what I'm going to do here so I'm just going to drop in some steps and think about what we need to do and then we can work backwards and figure out what variables we need to pass into this. Turns out there were quite a few steps so let me talk you through them and then we'll just do them piece by piece and maybe dump things as we go. So remember when we said if we don't actually have a sort value there's no point going any further and so what we're going to simply do if we don't have sort is return. So that obviously tells us that we need to add this as a uh, method parameter. So we're going to, here we're going to say sort. And then what we need to do is we've, if we've got past this point, we have a sort. And so we need to split it into sort fields. So sort fields equals, and this will be explode. We need the separator, which will be a comma, and then we're simply going to say sort. Okay, so I think before we go any further, what we'll do is we'll pass sort into there, and we will just see, do we have, have we got to this point, do we have some sort fields, rather than getting all the way to the end and finding out we don't. All right, so we've now split that into an array. We have two items in that array, departure time and destination. So what we're going to do next is we're going to loop over those sort fields. We will default the order to ascending. And then if the field begins with a minus, that means we need to set it to descending. So that's what we'll do there. We'll also, if it begins with minus, we'll need to remove that from the name because the name is actually going to be used uh, to add or to sort on in the database. Uh, and then what as a little safety check, we don't want to be able to just say you can sort on any field. We actually need to specify what fields we're going to make our API sortable on. And so we'll set the default fields for this and check that those fields or the field that we're currently looping over uh, is does support sorting. And if so, we'll add the order by. OK, so the next step here is to loop over the sort fields. So I'm going to say for each sort fields as sort field, we will set, I'm just going to copy all this stuff into there, by the way, just keep us on track. Uh, we'll set the default order to ascending. So I'm going to say sort order equals uh, we'll use uppercase here because queries kind of like that or queries are easier to read uh, when you use uppercase for this kind of thing. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to check, does the sort field begin with that minus? If sort field item zero, so the first character in that sort field equals minus, then what we need to do is set it to descending. So I've dropped these next two steps inside of the curly braces for the if. So here, if we're saying that the first character in sort field is minus, then we're going to set it to descending. The only way we can test this really is to actually set one of these to minus, isn't it? So we'll set departure time to minus. We'll fire this off and we'll dump out the sort field. 
So hopefully we should see departure time here. Okay, so we see departure time, but we need to strip off this minus because we need to query the database using the actual name of the field, departure time. Okay, but first we're gonna set this to descending because that hyphen means sort in descending order. So sort order equals descending. We can remove the hyphen like so, sort field equals substring, sort field one. So we're basically taking the sort field and getting it back with from the first index only, from the first character onwards only, meaning that we'll actually miss out this hyphen here. So let's actually just check what our sort field looks like now. Hopefully it will look, uh, it will just be departure time without the hyphen. So far so good. And then what we need to do now is check that the field supports sorting. So which fields shall we have that should be sortable here? I think we'll go with uh, destination, departure time, and we can also do origin. So I'll say if in array, I can never remember if it's needle or how you stack first. So if the sort field is in this array, so this is what we're looking at, departure time, origin, and destination. If that's the case, then we're going to use our order by. Now to do the order by, we're gonna need a query builder. So that can be our second arg. Let's just drop this onto a new line now. So here we're gonna need a query builder. We'll call that QB like we've done previously. And then we'll say QB, and we should have an order by. Add order by, just in case you've already added previous order bys. And we're going to need the table name and the sort field. We have the sort field. The table name, if you remember when we first built this up, is this alias here. So that's something that we're going to need to set here as well. So right at the top of the find flights, what we'll do here is we'll have table name equals. And you know what? I prefer to use the full name. So we're going to go with that. Flights. So here we'll say table name and we'll replace the F. So anywhere where we see an F. So table name, apply sort. Here we're gonna say the first argument is sort. The next one will be query builder. And the next one we're gonna say table name. So that will be a string table name. Here, just before we do that query, what I'm gonna do is just gonna dump out and make sure we are actually getting a table name here. The table name should be flights. Okay, that's good. And now we'll say query builder, add order by, and this will be the table name dot, and then the sort field. And then the next thing we need to add, if we look at the second argument for add order by, it's the actual order. And so that is our sort order, whichever one of these it is, uh, ascending or descending. So we know that it's actually going to be descending because we put that little hyphen on there, that minus sign. And so now I think if we scroll up to the top, we're applying the sort. So we should actually get our records in reverse departure time. Let's test that theory. So we're getting some records back. This one is 250110 at 1700. This is 250019 at 1600. This is 225018 at 1500. Let's remove the hyphen and see what happens now. Okay, and so this is now 2025-0101 at 0800. So that's now going in ascending order. And if we place the hyphen back in front of that, we get 2025 20, so that is in reverse order. So we know our sort is working on that one. Let's do it by destination. So we'll do departure time ascending and then destination. I'm just going to apply some more filtering here. So we'll just do origin and destination is A, B, C, D, E, F. If I need to make any changes in a database to demonstrate this, then I'll do that. So here we should get less records. Uh, it's telling us F origin. So what we have there is, so here we needed to actually update the table name here as well. So on apply filters, we'll also pass in a table name string, I think. I'll just do that behind the scenes. 
So I ended up having to do quite a lot there. Don't worry, this will all be attached to the uh, lesson files. So what I've done is basically anywhere where we were using that F, I've just sat, decided that I want to use table name. So in the find flights query, where we're doing the apply filters, we're using table name there. Uh, where we're doing apply sort, we're using table name. In count filtered flights, I also used the name table name and I used that in the count query there and also passing it into the query builder, passing it into apply filters, uh, and then apply sort obviously takes the table name, and the apply filters method takes the table name now, and where we've done each of these and where, we've actually used the table name there instead of F. Okay, and so then when you fire this off again, we have three records. Now what I'm gonna do is in fact, we need two on the same day, don't we, just to see that these are actually happening. So what I'm going to do is I'll dive into the database and I'll make these both on the same day. You can see that one starts on 21st uh, of the 1st, 2025. This one starts on 2nd of the 1st, 2025. And this one is on 3rd of the 1st, 2025. So actually, uh, I'll just go and make them all on the same date. Okay, so I've made some changes in the database just to be able to demo this. The data is a little unrealistic at the moment because I have flights which are taking off after they've technically landed, but never mind, we'll ignore that for the time being and just demo this. So here we're going to do departure time and destination in ascending order. And so if I fire that off, you'll see we get this one A, B, C, D, E, F, and then that takes off at the same time as this A, B, C, F, G, H. Uh, on the same date and so if I change destination to descending order then those should switch places I hope okay and so they do so because we've put destination descending order FGH uh, would come first in that kind of sorts and so then that changes place with this one and then these you'll notice uh, the departure times go in ascending order uh, 0809 and 10 what would happen if we did that in reverse order? We should see it again, another change of place. And so here we see 10 first, 9 a.m. and then 8 a.m. and then our other 8 a.m. And if we switch destination there, then those last two should change places. And so in ascending order, DEF comes before FGH. I hope that's been enough to show you how sort works. That one's been pretty long. It's been uh, pretty complex. Let's just check pagination, make sure that these are still working. So we do have uh, four total items, one page. We're on current page of one and items per page is that default of 10. How about if we went and messed about with this and said items per page was two, is our pagination still gonna work? Always thoroughly check everything. So here we only get two flights. Uh, pagination looks good, we're on page one. There is no previous page. Total items of four, two items per page. One, uh, we're on the current page of one. Items per page is two, and it's all paginating and sorting in the correct order. We now have pagination, we have filtering and we have sorting, it's all functional. However, I've looked at an opportunity for some code reuse here. In a similar way that we did with our pagination uh, metadata factory, we knew that we wanted to be able to add pagination links and metadata to all different resources. And we're probably going to want to sort all different resources on various fields as well. And so that's what we're going to have a think about in this one. So in the flight repository, we have this apply sort method. And what we want to do is sort of extract this out, pull it out into its own class uh, where it can be reused on other um, sort of repositories or other resources. And so I think what I'll do is I might let you have a think about it, maybe have a go at it if you think you're up to the challenge. What would we need to do to this apply sort method to make it reusable? Um, I'll give you some like clues, but I'd sort of go down the same path as what we did with the pagination metadata factory and make this static method on a class of some sort. Um, and the other one other consideration is we need to figure out what is going to be reusable, uh, how have we named things, what would we actually have to change in order to make this reusable. And I can only really spot one place here. 
and that is here where we have hard coded stuff which is relevant only to flights so what i would do is actually make that dynamic in some way and something which could be injected as a parameter but apart from that i'm not going to give you any more clues i'm just going to let you have a go at this so take your time have a look at it see how it works at the moment and think about how can we extract this out and use it in our flight repository use it in other repositories and as usual make sure you test your work once you're done all right, so here's my solution on that. We said we want these items here to be reusable, don't we? So what we'll do is we shall cut that from there and we'll give this a name instead. And so I think I'll go with supported fields and this will be an array. So supported fields instead of that array there. And that will be something that we pass in here. So we'll say array and that will be supported fields supported fields so the names do match because it's lit up in orange which is nice and handy for us and then before we go and extract this just let's make sure that we get it working first of all with what we've got so here what we're going to do is we're going to actually pass in that array which i cut from there so let's go over to postman and just check that it's still working now that we've made a change fire this off once more and here are our results. So we're getting two results because we paginated this items per page is two and we're sorting it on departure time in reverse order followed by uh, destination. Okay, so yeah, that departure is after that one. We're going in reverse order. So this is still working exactly the way we left it. Let's go back now and have a think about how we're going to extract this. So inside of repository, I'm going to create a query utils folder. So this will be like a bunch of uh, utility classes, which will help us with queries. Um, can't think of a better name at the moment, but if you can, then yeah, just uh, make me a suggestion. And then inside of here, I'm just going to call it sort. And that tells you exactly what it does. It's going to have one single responsibility and that will be to sort. So I'm simply going to call that sort. We'll add that to git and this is going to be a static function but first of all let's just cut this all from here that is all gone drop it into sort you'll notice that it's done the imports for me that's very important it has imported my query builder for me we're going to make this a public static function so public static function and we're just going to call it apply because sort apply sort sounds a bit strange in my head let's make sure we've got everything here we made that change to make this more dynamic and to make it more reusable so the supported fields just has to be any array which we can pass for any uh, resource for any repository so i think this is looking reusable let's go back to flight repository and see where we used it so here I'm going to replace this line with sort, apply, remove the closing parentheses and the semicolon. The rest of the information is all being passed in the exact same way. And so I believe that this will still work. Let's once again go and test that theory. So whenever you write a new piece of code or you do any refactor, just keep hitting the retry button every step of the way. Don't leave it like 300 lines of code or something before you go and check to see if something has worked. And that has actually worked. Let's give it a full test. So here I'm just going to start changing some of the parameters. So we'll move the items per page so we should get more items per page. And so now we're back to getting four we're support. We're sorting by departure time in reverse order, which means we get this one at 10 a.m. on uh, the first the first 2025th first let's actually go and change that order so we do that by removing the minus sign let's send this again and so now that's gone back into normal ascending order starting with one at 8 a.m on the same date let's change the destination so that that's going in reverse order and so that means that these two first records should change places and the one going to destination destination fgh should then be first and indeed that does happen so i think now we have a nice reusable sort component but like i've said before when you're building reusable components there's only one way 
to really prove that they are reusable and that is to reuse them. So in the next one, let's actually see if we can apply our sort to the reservations. Let's have a look at sorting our reservations. And in fact, once again, I'm gonna let you have a go at this if you think you're up to it. If you managed to follow along in the last one and you understood all of the code and what this sort component is doing, then there's no reason why you can't have a go at this. And I would encourage you to have a go at it because the biggest skill that a developer can have is problem solving. And those that actually have a go at the challenges and things like that are the ones which make the most progress. Those that sort of go through code line by line, making sure they understand everything. Uh, because when you're learning, we're not focused on the outcome. The outcome here is making something sortable, but you don't just want me to hand you the solution and not really understand that solution the thing that you need to get out of this is the understanding not the end product but the understanding of how i've made that end product work and the the best way to do that is to actually uh, try things out yourself so uh, like i say have a look at the flight repository see how that works and think about how you can adapt this find active reservations by flight number uh, method in the reservation repository. What do you need to do for the input parameters? Is there anything, is there any more information which this uh, method will need? And how will we adapt this in a similar way as what we made adaptations in our flight repository here? And one extra piece of information, obviously we're going to need to know uh, which fields to sort on. So I think I'm gonna go with seat number travel class and created at so those three which you see sort of in the middle of this query here uh, just make it sortable on those and if you remember how we did that is we created an array for fields which we can allow the sort um, component to sort of consider and so that's what you'd need to do here apart from that i don't think you really need any more clues all the information's there you have all the code so if you think you're up to it pause me now and give it a go here's my solution so again like we did in the flight repository i've set a table name which means i've had to make some changes to the query a bit uh, when I create the query builder, I pass in the table name and here where we were doing the select part of the query where I was hard coding R, uh, which we'd used uh, as an alias for the reservations table. What I've done now is I've replaced all those R's and any reference to R with the actual uh, table name there. And uh, it's because I just needed the table name for that. Uh, dynamic uh, parameter which we're passing to the sort apply method so once we've done all that section of the original query uh, we're at the same fields we need we're joining flight to adjoining passenger we're saying that uh, the cancel that field um, is null so we only want active records and we're saying where the flight number is, this flight number, so we're filtering uh, on the flight number. So none of that filtering has changed, uh, but what is new is this. So we're throwing our sort uh, component into there. The first bit is the actual uh, sort filter itself. Are we passing a sort filter? Is the client passing a sort filter? Um, and if not, then we just default that to null. We need a query builder. We need the table name because we need to know which table we're performing this on. And then the actual fields which we're going to allow sort on. So we said created app, travel class and seat number. And then after that, after we've done the sort, that's when we throw in the pagination and then we are simply returning the same as what we did before, which is query builder, get query, get result. And at the top here, we did add one other parameter. We need the filters because the filters is that where is where we're going to get the sort key from. How do we get the filters? Well, we simply get them from the query parameters. So uh, in the reservations controller, in the index method, we're passing request get query params as a fourth um, argument to the find active reservations by flight number method. All right, so over to 
Postman. And here I'm sorting on created at. If I fire this off, you can see the created at. And it's not easy to read because of the way the date time is written. But you should see that that first one is 8.45. This is 8.50, 8.55, all in the same day. So you can see they're going in ascending order. How do we go in descending? We simply add that minus. It's the JSON API spec, which we are following for this. Send this again. And as you can see now, our top result is 9.35, then 9.30. 925 so we're going in descending order uh, we said we can filter on seat number as well so we'll go with the seat number uh, fire this so here in ascending order we see we have 2d 2e 2f and then 3a let's actually uh, change the seat number sorting into descending with our little minus hyphen send this again and so now we're on 4b 4a 3f okay so we know that our sort component is reusable we've proved that it will sort um, flights and we have proved that it will also sort reservations so we perform our basic query like we do here we do any uh, filtering or clauses on join tables things like that and then what we do is we apply the sort and so here we said that we want to be able to sort uh, the reservations table on the created at travel class and seat number and we're able to do that in ascending and descending order and so this now completes the whole section on pagination filtering and sorting i hope you've enjoyed this one we're now good to move on to something else so how did you find that? If you've made it as far as this, then I'm guessing that it must feel like it's gone fairly quickly and you're ready to do more. And the good news is there is lots more because the PHP API Pro course covers everything you could possibly want to know about building APIs in PHP. And that would include API fundamentals, REST operations, API design and documentation, error handling, response content, which is some of what we've just worked on there, performance and optimization, API security, versioning, API testing, consuming APIs, and we'll also have a look at other API types. And then there'll also be a bonus section where I add content, which people have requested. So very comprehensive, but I think the work which you've done so far gives you a nice head start for when you do enroll. The details for doing that are in the description and I'll also leave a link at the end of the video. I'll see you on the inside.